The global water supply faces constant and worsening threats. Climate change, overconsumption, poor management. It is a challenge pushing scientists, politicians, and designers to hunt for innovations that could lead to new sources of water. John Yang reports on one such effort that involves innovation for our breakthrough series on the leading edge of science and technology. Situated on the edge of the Sahara in southern Morocco, Mount Bout Mesquita gets only about five inches of rain a year. But what it lacks in rain, it makes up for in fog, which blankets the area for about half the year. So that's where residents have now turned for their water, harvesting it from fog. Alongside scientists from the German Water Foundation, the Moroccan nonprofit Dar C. Hamad has set up what's said to be the largest fog collection project in the world, about 19,000 square feet of nets called cloud fissures. As fog rolls through, the mesh traps fresh water, which drips into a receptacle. A network of pipes takes it to the villages below, where about 1,000 people every day use it for drinking, and watering plants and animals. Jamila Bargosh is director of Darcy Hamad. The fact of having water has radically transformed the life of the women who used to walk for hours to get water, one, and two, there was always the fear of not having enough water. Right now, that fear is not there anymore. But in other places, the fear remains. Experts say there's a global water crisis, with at least two-thirds of the population living in areas that lack water one month a year or more. This summer, Chennai, India, has had to rely on water deliveries from tanker trucks. A poor monsoon season left all the city's reservoirs dry. The relationship between water supply on the one hand and water demand on the other hand. Betsy Otto directs the World Resources Institute's Global Water Program. We're seeing really significant shifts, much more erratic rainfall, uh, snowpack and glaciers that have been very important sources of slow release water to much of the world are disappearing. So we're seeing really significant changes from global climate change. While collecting water from fog may sound revolutionary, it's actually an ancient technique and one found in nature. An African beetle captures fog droplets with small bumps on its back. And archaeologists have found evidence it was used centuries ago in the Middle East and South America. How can we get as much water as possible from fog today? With climate change and high consumption making water scarcity a growing problem around the world, researchers are tackling that question. One technique is being tested here at this farm at Virginia Tech. For fog harvesting. Industrial um, design professor wrong, Brooke um, Kennedy is part of the team that developed the fog harp. Um, fog it uses so tightly placed so vertical wires as opposed to crisscrossing mesh. Either they tend to be too open, so a lot of fog passes through them, or they're too tightly woven, and so the fog droplets get stuck. What we've done differently here is that we've removed the horizontal wires, and this prevents the water droplets from getting stuck, so they quickly, through gravity, drop away. Tests have found this design to be at least three times more effective at capturing water than traditional nets. For Kennedy, this was a case of biologically inspired design, influenced in part at least by California redwoods. The towering trees draw much of their water from fog accumulating on their needles. The solution isn't embedded with, uh, you know, circuits and other high-tech um, accoutrements or features. It's a fairly simple solution, but yet by just tweaking meaningfully the design, really at a small scale, the results are rather dramatic. You know, what would their visual form be? The uh, team is now working on the next generation of fog harps, making them sturdier, more colorful, exploring the best wiring material. Vapor going through the screen. Within a few years, the plan is to test hundreds of harps in places battling water scarcity like Peru or South Africa. And we have our setup to capture water. In Cambridge, Massachusetts, MIT scientists are trying to take the innovation surrounding fog collection even further. They've discovered that zapping air rich in fog with a beam of electrically charged particles draws the droplets toward the mesh, dramatically increasing its ability to collect water. 
Right now, the system is off, so you can see that this plume can pass through the mesh unaffected, and then it goes around. But when we turn the electric field on, the plume vanishes instantaneously, and then water starts collecting on that mesh. The idea is to use the system on power plant cooling towers. Almost 40% of all fresh water taken from U.S. rivers, lakes, and reservoirs is set aside for that critical purpose. MIT mechanical engineering professor Kripa Varanasi leads the team. We were able to fundamentally change the trajectories of these droplets. In fact, we saw you know, these drops that were going away make a U-turn and come back. And so we went from that half to a you know, couple of percent efficiency to almost 100% efficiency. While both the projects are promising, the expert, the scientist, and the designer agree. Water innovation must be coupled with better water management. We're going to have to find new ways of storing it or capturing it in places that used to have more water than they'll now have. Yes, it's important to have those technologies, but that alone is not enough. Water is a very passionate topic for me, coming from India, where water is a major crisis. You know, it's a big societal problem and not a simple you have a power plant, I can sell you this thing. It's not going to be the only measure that needs to be taken. I mean, I think conservation in combination with other techniques working in unison will help us tackle water scarcity. That combination may mean the difference between losing or maintaining one of the most basic elements of life on Earth. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm John Yang.